Coming up, what's on your mind? I'm eight years old. I'm from Minneapolis. I have a question for you. Can dogs get sunburned? That answer and more straight ahead. Then meet the newest member of the Ferguson Fire Department. When she first came in, she just laid on the recliners like she'd been there for 20 years. Yeah. Also in our latest Inspiring Kids series, we'll introduce you to a girl who is on a mission to pay it forward, helping kids who are sick. What kind of things do your foundation do? One uh, major thing that we do is called Sadie Slay. So Sadie Slay is a toy drive that I do um, every year for kids fighting childhood cancer in the hospital. Plus, our pal Carrie Sanders takes us to France for a look at those who fought for freedom on the shores of Normandy on D-Day. And with them, a young volunteer who got a front row to living history. I understand the importance of respecting the military. And then, what does it take to be a ninja? Big explosive pull-up. Nice. Our pal Dr. John Torres takes a look at a new sport kids are trying out at gyms across the country. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you. We have a super lineup ahead, including a look at a sport some kids are loving. I just fell in love with the sport. I loved it so much when I started. Same thing? Yeah, we were watching it on TV, and then we really wanted to try it. We'll bring you that story in a little bit. Plus, summer reading. We know it's summer break for many kids, but there are a few books worth picking up this summer. We've got the details ahead. But first, what do you say we start this week with what's on your mind? We've received a few new questions relating to summer. And joining us now in our Ask the Doc segment is our pal, Dr. John Torres. Dr. John, summer is here, and our viewers have a couple of questions. The first one is from two of our regular Kids Edition viewers. Hi, I'm Aveline, and I'm nine. I'm Zion, and I'm seven. And we live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And today, we have a question about sunscreen. How did scientists come up with the idea of sunscreen. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. We love kids news. That's a really good question. And all those SPF numbers we see, what's the story, Doc? You know, that's a great question. Right now, we can just go to the store and get something that's SPF 50 in this case. But it hasn't always been like that. As a matter of fact, thousands of years ago, the Egyptians used to use different things to try and protect themselves from the sun. Sometimes they use mud, olive oil, other People around the world would use different ingredients to try and keep the sun away from burning their skin. Didn't always work. Well, back in 1938, that's almost 85 years ago, a college student was climbing a mountain. He got a bad sunburn. He said, I am tired of this. He invented sunscreen, 1938. And since then, we started getting things like SPF factors, environmentally friendly sunscreen, those types of things. But the important thing to remember is this sunscreen has gotten to the point where it's formulated really well. It can protect us from the sun. You just need to use it appropriately and need to use it frequently when you're out in the sun to prevent that sunburn, which we know can damage the skin. A great and interesting answer. I had no idea the history behind sunscreen. Our next question is another good one. It comes from Minnesota. I'm Lester and Dr. John. I am Bennett and I'm eight years old. I'm from Minneapolis. I have a question for you. Can dogs get sunburned? Thank you. I love Night and Lutes Kids Edition. Can dogs get sunburned, Doctor? You know, this is a great question, and I actually had to look it up because I didn't know, but it turns out, yes, dogs can get sunburned just like we can, so you have to be careful with them when they're out in the sun, particularly if the dog has light-colored fur, white fur, or thin fur, or some of those dogs that actually have no fur, they can get badly sunburned, so you want to make sure you protect them. But the important thing is you don't want to use human sunscreen because some of the ingredients, if you put it on their dog and they lick it, it can be harmful to them. So you want to use dog-specific sunscreen, and they do make such a thing. And when you put it on the dogs, you want to make sure you put it in certain areas. Put it around their nose, put it around their lips, the tips of their ears, and then their back legs. You want to put it inside their back legs and on their belly because you know how dogs sometimes like to lay up and absorb the sun this way. They could burn their belly as well. For them, every four or five hours, you want to make sure you reapply it. But just like you do with us, you know, stay out of the sun during that hot part of the middle of the day. Make sure you're only out there for a little bit of time. And then reapply that sunscreen to the dogs as well so they don't get burned 
burned, especially dogs that have light colored noses or light colored eyelids, they can get burned badly, so you want to make sure you protect them. Yeah, I was watching my dog stretched out enjoying the sun yesterday. I have learned something very important. <laughs> Dr. John Torres, thanks, my friend. I know a little later on you're going to tell us about a sport that some kids are really gravitating towards these days, so we look forward to that. You bet. Well, speaking of summer, one of my favorite things to do when I'm relaxing is pick up a good book. And kids, even though school's out there, are a lot of fun books out there to read. Here with some suggestions is our good friend from the Today Show, Jenna Bush Hager. Hey, Lester, it's so great to be with you guys, and I hope you're all enjoying summer. Okay, you know that summer is the perfect time to pick up a good book, and I wanted to share a few of my favorites of my Read with Jenna Jr. book club list. Let's start with readers who are ages 8 to 12. Okay, one book I love is Ramey Nightingale. It's by legendary children's book author Kate De Camillo. It's about three girls who form an unexpected friendship and how their journey makes them who they are. Okay, another great summer read is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. She tells her own coming of age story in New York and South Carolina. The book has received several honors, including the National Book Award. And if you like adventure, maybe something a little scary to read with the flashlight under the covers, the Goosebumps book series by R.L. Stein has been a hit among readers for three decades. The books about a child fighting a monster have inspired a TV series and some movies. Now, I haven't forgotten about all the younger kids out there, let's say between the ages of four and eight. If you like graphic novels, you might want to pick up a copy of Cat Kid Comic Club. It's hilarious. It's by the creator of Captain Underpants, and the series celebrates creativity and storytelling. It is so much fun. My kids love it. There are also great picture books, including, of course, beloved classics like Goodnight Moon. It's great for younger readers, especially to read to those babes at bedtime. These are just a few of my personal favorites, and if you want to see more, head to at Read with Jenna on Instagram for my full list. I hope you guys are having a great summer and happy reading. Back to you, Lester. Jenna Bush Hager, thanks so much. Now let's head to Missouri, where a new member of the Ferguson Fire Department is settling into her new job. Amber. Meet Amber. <laughs> Officials say she was found wandering around a construction site earlier this month. Police picked her up and brought her to the kennel behind the firehouse. But because it was hot and shelters were full, the fire department brought her inside for the weekend. When she first came in, she just laid on the recliners like she'd been there for 20 years. Yeah. That weekend turned into a forever home. The Ferguson Fire Department is permanently fostering Ember and they say she's keeping the station smiling. Want to go out in the bay? She wants to go out in the bay with us. So it, it brings a certain level of calm and, uh, and a whole lot of happiness to the engine out. Okay, let's turn now to our inspiring kids series. This week, we introduce you to a girl who is paying it forward, helping kids diagnosed with cancer find some comfort and joy. We get details now from our new Kids Edition correspondent, Madeline. I am one of those kids who has cancer. Sadie Teller was diagnosed with leukemia at seven years old. As a way to cope, she shared her journey from her mom's closet. Why did you start making these videos? I wanted to let other childhood cancer fighters know that they're not alone and that um, just to give them an idea of what may happen in the hospital, or what it may look like, what you're going through and stuff like that. I wanted to give them hope that they can get through whatever they're going through and that they're never alone. And I wanted to do something so that they wouldn't have to be so afraid and to give them hope that they will get through whatever they are going through. Is it okay to be scared? I believe that it is completely okay to be scared. I went through some really, really scary times whenever I was a kid. And going through cancer is scary. I still get scared to go to the hospital and to go to doctor's offices. And it's just a normal thing when you're a kid to be scared about things like that. So never be ashamed of being scared because some things are really scary. Now cancer free, Sadie wants to give back to kids just like her. So she started a nonprofit, the Sadie Keller Foundation, back in 2016. What kind of things do your foundation do? One uh, major thing that we do is called Sadie Slay. 
So Sadie Slay is a toy drive that I do um, every year for kids fighting childhood cancer in the hospital on Christmas. And I did this because I thought that Santa has the whole world to see and how do all these kids get what they want in the hospital on Christmas. So every single year I collect toys and donate them to hospitals so that these kids can get what they want during Christmas. And uh, I also do something called milestone gifts, which is whenever a child the cancer uh, fighter reaches a big milestone in their treatment, like um, finishing treatment, finishing radiation, maybe going back to school, or even if they're in a hard time and they need something to cheer them up, I get them a really awesome gift to congratulate them. Another thing Sadie's Foundation does is fight for more pediatric cancer research. Sadie was actually at the White House when the STAR Act was signed. It helps kids battling cancer and supports their families. What was it like meeting the president? Well, that was probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. I was very nervous that day, but also really excited and honored to have gotten that opportunity. Um, it was just crazy. I couldn't believe it. Do you have any advice for kids who um, would like to give back to their community? Dream big and believe that you can do it. No matter how old you are or what you want to make a difference for, you truly can do that. But you need to make sure to believe in yourself and know that you can do this because then you can do anything that you imagine. No dream is too big. Dreaming big and hoping to inspire other kids. Madeline, thanks so much for bringing us that great story. Nice to have you on board. And Sadie, it's so wonderful what you're doing. Okay, now let's talk about exercise and staying fit. Some gyms here in the U.S. are literally showing kids the ropes, teaching them a new sport called Ninja. I love the name. The details now from our pal, Dr. John Torres. You may have seen it on TV. Competitors running, jumping, and flying through a giant obstacle course. American Ninja Warrior, which airs on NBC, has drawn viewers in. I just fell in love with the sport. I loved it so much when I started. Same thing? Yeah, we were watching it on TV, and then we really wanted to try it. The sport is known as Ninja, inspired by the TV show, and it's sweeping the country. Gyms are popping up in cities like Castle Rock, Colorado, literally showing kids the ropes. I started coming here because it was a good workout and it was really fun and I just made lots of friends doing it. 16 year old Caden Lebsack first competed on American Ninja Warrior Junior when he was just 13 years old. Then last year, Caden went up against competitors on the adult version of the show and was crowned the winner. You gotta come on! What kind of emotions did you have? It definitely took a while to, to actually hit and realize that I just did that. Once it hit, it was crazy. You know, I've been watching the show forever and then realizing that I did that was, it was incredible. And are you still pinching yourself? Definitely. If you're like me, you've probably watched competitors on TV and wondered if you had what it takes to be a ninja. I start on this red mat. What with Caden's help, my curiosity turned into a reality. Using anything to get there. All right, first up, balance. Nice, good save. Is the floor like lava, basically? Floor is lava, yep. <laughs> okay, and then go from here. Whoop. Nice, good job, that was awesome. Well, that went, that went okay. Now, onto agility. So here, grab this one. Yep. And Point. agility, like you said? Yep, nice. Ta da Next, a bigger test, the rings. Yeah, what are tips? What's the, what's the key here? Tips, I would start two hands on one ring. Okay. Try to reach out and grab the next ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, one you... left. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. That was pretty all good. Right. Okay. okay, I may have gotten a little help there, but being a ninja is all about learning and practice. When you first started, what were you able to do? Um, not as much as I am now, but that's with everything in life. You just got to work towards it. And these kids love putting in the work. What's your favorite obstacle? Uh, my favorite obstacle is the salmon ladder. What's your favorite obstacle? I really like the salmon ladder and fast moving obstacles. The iconic salmon ladder seemed to be everyone's favorite, so I gave it a try. Big explosive pull up. Nice. <laughs> And so you gotta kinda high. pull it back and move up, right? Yep. It's much harder than they make it look on the show. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. That was pretty good. <laughs> and kids, just a note, please don't try this at home. 
If you don't have a gym near you and you still want to learn, Caden says you can start small. What kind of things and the person is out there and they don't have access to a gym, what would you recommend a kid do to start off? Definitely starting with pull-ups and running, sprints, all kind of physical activities help. But beyond exercise and building strength, these ninjas are also picking up a few life lessons. I tried a lot of these obstacles today, did not do very well. So part of the learning process here is you fail a lot. Yes. What does that teach you? It teaches you just, like, you gotta just get back up and like try again, because you don't get a lot of these obstacles first try. And what happens when you fall down? Sometimes you get frustrated, but a lot of the times you get back up and you'll get it again. But you might not get it right away. No. Sometimes it takes time and yeah. coming back day after day. Yeah. And what does it feel like when you finally get that? Oh, yeah, so good. It's yeah, really it's good. awesome. At the end of the day, this sport is really about two things, perseverance and fun. What's your favorite part about Ninja? Oh, my favorite part is meeting new friends and showing up a lot and just going for it. Do you have a lot of fun doing this? Yes. What's the most fun? Everything. I just, I just love doing this. Are you going to keep doing it? Yeah. For how long? Forever. What would you tell a kid watching this that's like, yeah, I, I think I might want to do that? What would you tell them? Go for it. Train hard and have fun while doing it. And how important is that part, to have fun? That's the main part for sure. A sport showing us all you're never too old or too young to become a ninja. Okay, Dr. John, I knew you would give it a try. Thanks so much. Finally, we want to switch gears and take a look back at a time when the world was at war. World War II was a defining moment for our country and the world. And the key battle that led to victory was called D-Day. Our friend Kerry Sanders recently joined some men who fought on D-Day in France. And with them was a young volunteer who got a front row to living history. Lester, kids reading in their social studies or history class might come across a page about D-Day. Well, we're here in Normandy, France. Behind me, headstones of Americans who died during what was the largest amphibious assault ever. Now, we're going to do something that is rather unusual because when you think about it, it was 78 years ago. But we're going to hear from some of those who were here on that day. And boy, do they have a story to tell. What's it feel like putting your shoes back on this sand? <laughs> it's eerie. It's eerie to be here? It is. It, it is very eerie oh, yeah. to be here. Jake Larson is a veteran of World War II, a 99-year-old great-grandfather. But back on June 6, 1944, he was a 20-year-old staff sergeant in the U.S. Army. On D-Day, he waded ashore in water up to his chin. While back home, most news came via radio because few own TVs. This is Robert St. John in the NBC newsroom in New York. Men and women of the United States, this is a momentous hour in world history. This is the invasion of Hitler's Europe. On the bluff overlooking the beaches where Jake and others landed, the enemy, Adolf Hitler's German army, the US orders, take the beaches, and then liberate Nazi-occupied France. I said, God, what am I doing here? What the f I can't see anybody to shoot at, but I ran. I weighed 120 pounds at, at five foot seven. And I said, thank God the Germans aren't good at shooting toothpicks. <laughs> uh, I, 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 honestly, I was thinking that. At 99, Jake now shares his message on, yes, TikTok. You TikTok fans, you, you just keep me going. Joining Jake and seven other still living D-Day veterans in France, high school student Riley Peterson. Her father was a Navy SEAL. Military service runs in the family. Not only her dad, but her great grandfather was a Marine pilot who flew fighter planes in World War II. Growing up in a Navy kid, I understand the importance of respecting the military and how important it is to make sure, to make sure the veterans know that we're appreciative of them. The 16-year-old Utah native recently volunteered her time with the Best Defense Foundation and Delta Airlines to help these vets make 
what is their last trip to the battlefields in Normandy, France. The aging veterans, 99, 100, up to 102 years old. Here to pay respects to the 9,387 members of the U.S. military who died during the invasion. Well, just hearing about the way that they fought and how brave they were just really inspires me because like nowadays, like so, some of the guys here, they forged their birth certificates. Like they were 15, 14 years old and they said that they were old enough and that, that amazes me. Jake would fit that amazing category. He joined the military when he was younger than 16 year old Riley is now. How old were you when you enlisted in the National Guard and how did you do that? Well, I was 15 years old in 1938. Did you lie about your age? Only three years. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why for the money? Every three months I'd get a check for $12. $12. Many say they joined the military back then to escape the Great Depression. The world's economy was in tatters from 1929 to 1939. The times were so troubled, often just a piece of bread was hard to come by. And we had to come in with high tide. Another who fought on D-Day, survived, and is still alive today, 99-year-old Bob Gibson. What was it like? It's very difficult to explain because if we were all young guys. Normally we, we couldn't care less, but there wasn't a one of us on the Rhinel Ferry that when we came in here that wasn't crying. It was so, scary. It sure was. Every tenth round was a tracer, so you knew how close the shells were getting. D-Day not only worked to liberate France, but it eventually led to the defeat of Hitler's Nazi Germany. Then Japan surrendered, and World War II was over. We call those who fought in World War II the greatest generation, in part because they're so humble. What do we owe you? You, you don't owe me. You don't owe me anything. Yeah, respect. That's all we ask for. So they took care of us when, like America, and they fought for us and everything. And now we are taking care of them, making sure they know that they're appreciated. When people call you a hero, what do you say? Oh, we done a job. We no hero. Just an everyday job but we're required to do. And all of us young, young people done it. And when they call you a hero? I, I, I tell you, heroes are the ones buried over here. Yeah, that's how Bob and I got, got up here. It, it, it was the people who made the way for me. They're buried here. They, they made it possible for us to get up here. We're, we're, we're not the heroes. We're the, we're the ones that, that continued the war. Even the youngest of the French recognized their freedom was delivered by America and the Allies on D-Day. I think they're brave, um, courageous, and nice, very nice. Joining the men who were there that day, paying respects to the fallen, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who is the son of a World War II veteran. What do you say to those families whose loved ones didn't come home? They didn't die in vain. Uh, they died for a cause. They died for the freedom and liberty of all Americans and, and frankly, for the Europeans. Uh, and we today wouldn't be living in a world, we wouldn't have the United States of America that we have today. We wouldn't be living in a world uh, of freedom and prosperity and life and liberty uh, without the sacrifice uh, of those troops. The still living D-Day veterans may not want to call themselves heroes, but we think they are. And they want us to remember those who gave their lives for the world we now live in. Lester? Carrie, thanks so much. And thanks to all the veterans who served on D-Day and all those who serve today. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.